Let's adore his name. Let's exalt his name. Let's thank him for the victory he's given unto us. Day and night. Victory even in your house. When you walk from one place to the other, it's by his victory. To use the bathroom and get out of it to the living room is victory. There are some people that use that same bathroom and suddenly they have heart attack. And some died. Some are able to call 911. Let's thank him for victory. For you to eat successfully and it's not going to, to, through the wrong pipe. Let's give him the glory. It's a victory. The same food you are eating, some cannot eat it. They can sh get shocked. But let's bless his name. Victory every hangus of life. When you go out and come back home safely, it's victory. The same here you are taking, some people cannot take it. Because it's just too much for their system. Let's thank him for victory. When you sleep and wake up successfully, it's victory. Let's thank him for victory. Victory of what you can see. The victory of those things you cannot see. Let's thank him for those victories. For those battles he's fighting for you day and night. Bible said daily, but Paul said daily, I was crucified. Because he was being faced with people that also understand the calling of God in his life. The same thing you and I. Some that doesn't understand the salvation you have, it will take a while for them to understand you. But let's thank God for victory of not going back to the world. Victory of remaining steadfast in him. Let's worship his name. Victory over the clothes you are putting on. Some put on that same kind of clothes and they started having reactions, which led to emergency hospital and which led to death. We are not mocking them, we are thanking Jesus Christ. This is mercies we are able to receive. That songwriter says, The stair, vastness, of the Lord never sees it. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every month, always new every month. Great Faithfulness, oh Lord, great is thy faithfulness. The steadfastness of the Lord never ceases, his mercy is never come. To an end, they are new every morning, always new every morning. Great is the faithfulness, O Lord. Great is thy faithfulness. Let's thank God. For great is his faithfulness. His mercies never come to an end. 
Until a man's die, a woman's die, that his mercies come to an end. Let's thank God. Some are still living, but they have died physically. They have died spiritually. Physically, they are living. The mercies of God have come to an end on him. Let's thank God because you and I, we are not died while you are, are living. Let's appreciate him. A lot of sorrows the enemy is sending. Let's thank God for always sending back to the sender. It's by his mercies. It's by his love. It's by his grace. Let's appreciate him. Let's exalt him. That song says, Hiru Oloru Woleyi Oloru Arato Shomula Arabaribiti Oloru Ife Oloru Aralagbara He said, who is that? What is that mighty, mighty God? He's a mighty God that does mighty things. Is a great God that does wondrous things. We never see someone like him. We never see a king like him. Like him. He's the king of kings. He's the Lord of lords. He's the God that remains kings and nobody can enthrone him. He's the, he's the God that remains king and no one can question him that your time has expired. The kings of this world, they have expiration day. But it's the God that never have expiration day. That is why that man says he's an ancient of this. Let's give him the glory. Let's exalt his holy name. Father, we worship you. Father, adore your name. Because you are so good. Kabi o o si o, Kabi o o si o, Kabi o o si o, Kabi o o si, Kabi o o si o, Kabi o o si o, Kabi o. Who can question him? Who can query him? Query him? Who can sue him? He's a judge over the old judges. Let's worship him. He's the master of the whole universe. He's the master over all the, pro, all, all, all the PhD holders of the whole universe. Let's appreciate him. Father, I worship you. Glory, honor, and adoration to your name, Lord. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father Lord. In Jesus' name, we give thanks. Let's go before him. In any way, we have come short of his glory. In any way, we have not walked up to his standard. By our lying fear, by our lying doubt, in some of the steps he wants us to take, is the same before him. In any way, we have not been performing how he wants us to perform as his children. When challenges come and we're supposed to take authority over those challenges and we started panicking, we started doubting, we started allowing discouragement, we started allowing negative thoughts to be coming in. Is a sin for him. Because he has given us authority. When we are not demonstrating it, 
is a sin before him. Where we're supposed to help and we are not, we did as I don't care attitude. Say, God, have your mercy. Let's pray, God, have mercy. Where the work of God is suffering in our hands. Let's ask for mercy of God. Where we allow negligence in the work of God. Let's ask for mercy. Where we're supposed to take steps of faith. And we are like, will it work out or not? Is a sin before him. Let's ask for his mercy. God have your way in our midst. God is not moving by multitude. He's not moving by how many is present. When we joined the prayer of yesterday, I bless God. Because you will see even some churches, they will say, oh, this is the number of we have. But some, despite the, 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 the little numbers, they contributed great to this coming convention. So which is telling me that it's not only we that are limited in numbers. We have other churches too. And even before that yesterday pray, I mean combined national pray, I mean meeting, I've heard of two pastors that I know of their churches, they just have eight members. But how do we take the work of God? It's not how far it is, how well it is. Let's pray that God Open the eyes of understanding of our people. Especially in this church. Just like one of our pastor's wife said, he said they are just eight, but maybe they have only three or four working. But even others who are not working, they still tax them. That this is national convention. And one of the things our daddy says is that if they can pay house rents, then they should be able to be able to appreciate the work of God and volunteer and contribute to it. It's not, it, now it's not whether I'm working or I'm not working. It's how we admire the work of God in our hands. And I remember one time I know of a student. Just a student is not working. But because he has passion for the work of God. 
the way he handled the things of God in that church, I was amazed. He, devote, he contributed and devoted time, even in kinds. All other students were moved from his life. The same thing to anyone. So let's pray that God, this convention coming, God touched the heart of our people. about who, the, the pastor alone, but even the body of Christ, the body in the church. Let's pray that God will open the heights of understanding, our heights of understanding of our members. At least out of those churches that was present yesterday, there are some who donated $14,000. And there's a particular family that said donated $10,000, just a family. There's another family that just donated $3,000. And there's a church that donated $28,000. The more you give, the more you receive. It's not a cost, not a blessing, but it's what a man so he will reap. Let's pray that God visit our church. Visit our members. Let them receive the vision of Christ to bring growth to the church of God. In fact, there was a message sent to me, and that message, the, the, boy, the, the writer was like, anyone have to pay tithes. Whether you are collecting the money from the government, you are a student, your parents give you the money, out of that you collect, you, you pay tithes, I mean tithes. I was touched with it that, wow, so students will have to pay tithes. And which is true. If God opened our eyes and God began to open my eyes to some things. Because nobody, God doesn't want anyone to be exempted in his blessings, in partaking in his heavenly blessings. Let us with God visit our members. This is not a, this is not a, I, I mean, it's not a proprietorship church. It's a church under someone's umbrella, under someone's leadership, under someone's authority, which is Christ. And we are not to be taking it personally. Let's pray that God, you open the eyes of our members, our people. They will see it the way Christ want them to see it so that there can be support in every angle of life to the growth of the church. Pray, pray, pray. Father, visit our members. Enough is enough of stagnancy. Remove every blockages in their hair, O oh Lord. Remove every veil preventing them from seeing your vision, your revelations. So that they can handle the work of God the way our forefather handled it. Take away negligence, O Lord. Take away personal interest. Give us heavenly interest. Heavenly interest to your work. Personal interest will tell you where well, I've been working since morning. I'm tired. I don't want to come to church today. But heavenly interest will let you receive strength from above and say, no, I'm keep moving because this work is not mine. 
someone accomplish in my hands. Let's pray. I hope you are praying. Let's pray open. yourself be part of the movers of the kingdom of God forward. Enough of I don't have, I don't have, I don't have. It's time to say, God bless me. And with the little I have, I want to demonstrate it. To help the church. Not for them to say, oh, this person is doing it. No. But to see the vision of God, that God, I must do it. But a person said, woe to me if I did not preach the gospel. It's not for people to see him, but it's for him to see that God has commissioned him to do it. And whatsoever is going to cause him, he's ready to bear it. That same mind we should have. And telling people around and within us. But I would say, how can someone hear the word when you are not being sent? When you are not sent to so those around you, your neighbors, how will they hear? How will they know they need to participate in moving the church of God forward? Father, enough of stagnancy. Every spirit of snake, oh God, targeted against the growth of this church, receive the fire of Holy Ghost. In the mighty name of Jesus. Every spirit of rising and falling, I paralyze you. I cast you to the bottomless pit of fire. Lord, spiritual injection to be awakened, oh God, for your work. Lord, give every member in this church and the body of Christ, O oh Lord. Father, we praise your name. So shall it be, O oh Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Praise the Lord. Thank for praise and worship. Join me, sing hallelujah. Jehovah Jireh has done me well. Come and join me, sing hallelujah. Jehovah Jireh has done me well. Come and join me. Hallelujah. He has done it all. Sing hallelujah. Jehovah Jireh has done me well. Come and join me, sing hallelujah. Jehovah Jireh has done me well. Come and join me, sing hallelujah. Jehovah Jireh has done Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah Jireh has done me well. I will lift up his name. I will lift up Jesus, oh Jehovah, Alpha and Omega, I will lift up Jesus, oh I will lift up Jesus, I will lift up Jesus, 
Oh, Jehovah, Alpha and Omega, I will lift up Jesus. Oh, Jehovah, Alpha and Omega, I will lift up Jesus. I will lift up Jesus. I will lift up Jesus. Oh, Jehovah, Alpha and Omega, I will lift up Jesus. Oh, Jehovah, Alpha and Omega, I will lift up Jesus. I will praise him every day. Praise the Lord now. Somebody praise the Lord now. Praise the Lord now. Praise the Lord now. Praise the Lord now. Jehovah, 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 I will praise him every day. Praise the Lord now. Somebody praise the Lord now. Praise the Lord now. Oh, Jehovah, 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 Shout hallelujah, 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 oh, hallelujah, shout hallelujah, 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 oh, shout hallelujah, hallelujah, shout hallelujah, shout hallelujah. Hallelujah to the Lord, hallelujah to the Lord, hallelujah to the Lord, hallelujah to his name, shout hallelujah, 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 oh, hallelujah, you are the Lord, that is your name. You will never share your glory with anyone. You will never share your glory with anybody. Almighty God, that is your name. You are the Lord, that is your name. You will never share your glory with anyone. You will never share your glory with anybody. Almighty God, that is your name. Eternal Jehovah, that is your name. You will never share your glory with anyone. You will never share your glory with anybody. Almighty God, that is your name. Give him more of glory. He will never share his glory with anyone. All the glory belongs to him. For all he has done, for all that we are, for what he has made us to be, all the glory belongs to him. Give him all the glory. To the heart he has taken us to, to where he's taking us to, give him all the glory. 
Give him all the glory. Give him all the glory. Give him all the glory. He deserves it. He will not share it with any, with anybody. Lord, we bless your name. We give you the glory. We give you all the glory. We give you honor. We give you all the glory. We give you honor. honor. All the glory, all the honor, all the glory, we give you honor. Thank you, Father. May all glory be ascribed unto your holy name. In Jesus' name we worship. Praise the Lord. We we'll bless the name of the Lord for a time like this and to know Him and to stay in His presence and to see another Monday, the first Monday in the month of June and for his protection upon our lives. We appreciate him. We're just going to look at view verses, then we're going to turn into prayer. First Peter chapter three, verse 12. First Peter chapter 3, verse 12. For the eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous, and his ears are open unto their prayers. But the face of the Lord is against them that do evil. And verse 16, having a good conscience that we as they speak evil of you as of evil doers, they may be ashamed that forcefully accuse your good conversation in Christ. For it is better if the will of God be so that you suffer for well-doing than for evil doing. Praise the Lord. Because of time for prayer, I will just say a little explanation on it. He said, For the eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous. Inasmuch you have given your life to Jesus, the very day you said, Jesus has accepted you into my life as my personal Lord and Savior, and you are being welcomed into the kingdom fold of the Lord Jesus Christ. From that excellent day, the heights of God has been upon you. So when you are walking in the darkest hour of the day, always know that the heights of God is still upon you. Even when there are trials, when you are being faced with forceful accusation, you should know that God's eyes is still on you. In as much you have not backslid there within, in as much you have not forsaken Christ within you, in as much you have not denounced Him within you, 
because it sashes our hearts. And the Bible says, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. When no man can read the history of your heart, the Lord knows it. But saying to the righteous, to the body of Christ, that still remain firm on him, he said his eyes is still unto him. So when the eyes of God is on you, then why will you be afraid? What will you be afraid of tomorrow? He said, let tomorrow take care of himself. Instead of allowing worriness, why not go to the Lord in prayer with fasting and say, God, I know you are in my, your eyes is on me. Let your eyes make that way out. Connect me with people of my kindness that will help me to accomplish my vision or the vision you have called me, the mission you have called me onto. Or maybe you are being faced with forceful accusation. Bible says, for it is better if the will of God be so, that you suffer for well-doing than for even doing. If you did what is wrong and you are being persecuted for that, that is not of God. You are being punished for wrong you did. But if you are saying what is right and see that persecution arose, then God is ever there to bear you house. I will read about a woman who committed, who, who killed, who committed a crime, and they sentenced him to life imprisonment. But the day that they are going to sentence him, the judges were there, family members, everyone was there, to hear that even pronouncement. But because she knew the Lord, she called upon God. And Jesus Christ appeared unto that room. The crime he was told he committed, he wasn't, she wasn't the one that actually committed it. The yeah, first earlier said she committed the crime, but she wasn't the one that, first, that, co that committed the actual crime. What am I saying in, sense, in essence? For because you have given your life unto Christ, there is a crime there for the enemy that you have committed. And the enemies will always be furious, trying to fight you so that you can come back. But it's less for you to say, I've carried the cross. I've made up of my mind. I'm not going back, no matter what it may be. No matter the time and length of the persecution. But Jesus Christ has paid that price. We should always remember it as a child of God. We're going to use it for prayer. We're going to say, God, let us learn to pray, open our place. It's always help. We're going to pray that God, as many that are living a righteous life, and because of what the persecution, the challenges they are facing, that God let your eyes be reflected unto them. Let them see the movements of the Holy Spirit. Let them feel your eyes directing them on the steps to take. Let us pray, let us pray. A lot of believers is facing some challenges because they accepted Christ or because they are preaching about Christ. Let's pray that God, let the heights of God be known to them. Let them see the movement of God in the situation they have. 
Paul and Silas saw the movement of God when they were in prison. The heights of God was with them. And that ice moved to shake the foundations of the prison. Let's pray that God, every, every, any body of Christ, any Christian, born again Christian, that have been in prison for what they know not of. Lord, let your eyes locate them and shake the foundation prison and cause a remarkable thing to happen there that they will know that truly God is with them. As many that are facing the, the, the word of man imprisonment, at work, they are not free to do their work because someone is monitoring them. Pray that God will release your eyes to fight for these believers, to fight for this body of Christ. One of our mommy was telling me one time that there's a, a lady, she helped to her workplace. And suddenly, because she doesn't know this lady have any even power, and he started controlling that place. Even the work they're supposed to give to this mommy, they give it to that lady she brought in there. But those who have the mind of Christ was like, what is going on? But they stood in gap in prayer. That God destroy every evil power that has come to this workplace. They didn't say because the workplace is not their home, then let me back up. Let me go and apply in another place. They look at it as no. It's a battle that only Christians can fight. And she prayed with some believers in that workplace. Before you know it, the manager caught that revelation and he saw this new lady that is that the, that, that just employed that is the, the source of the problems going on. When something is going on in the church of God, it's not for us to back up or back, back out. But for we to go on our knees and say, God, let your eyes shine on this church. Bible says, eyes is against the heathen doers. That let your eyes be against the work of the enemy in this church. Let us pray. I'm not impressed with our silence. Father, intervene. Let your eyes be seen, O God, in the body of Christ in our lives, in this church, to demolish and destroy every works of darkness, O God. Every work of darkness that is chasing away people from coming to your church, let your eyes reflect in and destroy so those, so those works of the enemies. Every act of wickedness, Hidden out of wickedness in our surroundings, hindering the growth of this church. Hidden out of wickedness of our members that might be saying negative things outside and coming in to pretend. Let your eyes be upon them so that they will see what they are doing is wrong and to repent, O oh Lord. And take a new leaf. As Paul discovered that what he's doing to the body of Christ is kicking against God. And the day she re he realized it on the way to Damascus, he made a great and positive U turn and surrendered all to you 
Father, touch these people to surrender all to you. Break the self-will, O oh God, in their lives, Lord. Let them realize the negative words they are saying outside that is destroying the body of, is destroying the work of God from moving forward. Let your eyes show upon them so that they will have a positive U-turn. Anywhere this is happening, the body of Christ worldwide, Father, let your eyes reflect it. In the name of Jesus. Let's pray as many in the north, west, south, east, as many believers that are facing hunger, that God send heavenly manners unto them. As Elisha was in the wilderness, and God sent the belt, heavenly belt, to feed him, that God Increase the faith of these people, Lord, and send your heavenly helpers unto them. I remember an, an evangelist was giving a testimony one day and said, during winter, they always moved to another city. And she had one or two girls. She always feel how these girls always cold. But one year, God transformed the life, their lives and sent helpers to them. And people donated jackets for these children. It's every year they move to different countries to do the work of God. There's still so many people out there, the same thing, doing the missionary work. Pray that God send helpers to them. Let them not be forgotten, O oh Lord. Let the labors of their hands not be forgotten. And fathers, they are doing the work for you that they will not lose their children. They will not lose their spouses. And we too here pray for yourself that God, as I'm doing the work for you, I will not lose my soul. I will not lose my soul. That God crown all my efforts with success so that I can reign with you in your kingdom. I don't want to be a bus conductor bringing souls to, your, to, the, to, the, to, the, to the car of heaven and never go with it. Father, I don't want to be left behind. Let my hands not do what will cause me to be left behind. Let my eyes not go into lustfulness that will cause me to be left behind. Let my body not go into lustfulness that will cause me to be left behind. Open your mouth and pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Father, in Jesus' name. Thank you because you are a great and mighty God. Thank you for all these prayers. Lord, I cover them all with the blood of Jesus Christ. Speedily answer them, O oh Lord, to the glory of your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. There's a lot of things. God did for me in the in sanitation in Nigeria. You know that environmental sanitation. So before we come out by seven o'clock, we we will leave home by six thirty. We have a my house. I and my the brother that comforted me and other people. We will go there. We go and sanitize our spiritual life. So we will finish by ten. Uh, and then we pray. You know, I was very small then, but I love God. Love me. So we pray, pray, pray. So when you see a lot of things out there, there are something they call uh, the what do they call it in my language? They call it I don't know how to. They call it Darika or 
if anybody calls you or do anything unto you, it can never happen unto you. That's my life. <laughs> I've swallowed my daddy come from when I was small with prayer. So I walk free anywhere I go. I don't, I don't, I don't care. Although I, that mother is living in my life, that anywhere I go is testimony. That is, a, that is a good boy. So, <laughs> as he walked against my enemies, walk in, in favor of my character. Uh, I only thank God for that. Only thank God uh, for that. Uh, so today we are going to go into into even if it is five minutes, even ten minutes. I want us to know when Pastor Dada was talking to us yesterday, uh, was a little bit ashamed uh, that uh, we can do it one hundred dollars. He said, "I don't want bad money in my in that money that we should do it." He used one language, but that's just the simple, simple thing. I was because I was thinking of what are we going to say. Uh, we are workers. Only tell us we are workers. When you look at our account, we have about maybe yesterday. Today I look at it, maybe about three hundred, three hundred dollars. And then I, you may be thinking it doesn't concern. This is where I'm going, so that you know how to pray. Don't bother that. I don't give money. I don't. That's not the only concern you. Uh, so I remember when I went to uh, ZBZ, your bank, uh, American Credit. Immediately they told me they said your account, your FICO account is in red. I told them they shouldn't bother because it is automatic payment. I went to the second one. I said your devil account, your FICO account is in red. I was so pissed off. Don't bother about you. I can only bother about if Bank of America called me that. There's no money in that account. But for you, I know it's automatic payment. So it is Bank of America that will, that's going to be responsible for it. So, but the one that pissed me off yesterday was that of yesterday. But when I look at my life, I look at everything, I see that there's a need to pray the name of the Lord. Financially, everything. I always tell everybody that, okay, like mommy that was telling us today, I was telling her how we always busy in my family, and why can't you do not? As if it's when you do not, that, get me right. As if it's when, that, when you do not, God is going to bless you more than any other person. I'm not saying because it's not good. You get what I'm saying? But when you are where, you, where God wants you to be, you are there. You will say, if God says, yes, this is not you are going to do, if you do not do it, that's a problem. But if God says, this not, this not is not your way, if you force your want onto it, that's another problem. So sometimes I'm telling them a lot of testimony, what God has done is like, uh, if you, let's say you do not, let's say you do not, let's say you do not, thank God, I will do that not, if it is the will of God. It was at the age of some, uh, 60 something, somebody becoming. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I want us to pray. Just, just that. I want that prayer to come into our, into our mind. Because I know God is going to do it. So, but when Pastor Dada said it yesterday, I was taught, since almost, I think it's the two messages I've sent to you about it, and then I sent it to him too, because I was so pissed off. I was so. Because they said our money is usually. Uh, we only want that border. Was that the by last two. There's no. But they, they have donated, those church have donated, there are some church that mentioned that they have donated in the past. For that, they said they don't, they said they have done a lot. That's right. You get what I'm saying? Then only, only, three, only three of us, we have one, <laughs> there was one brother that was arguing with him. When he see that this one is very, <laughs> he said, he said, brah, 
He called the name of the brother in Concord. Said, Please call me. I don't want to. I don't want to talk with somebody that's not going to give me money. <laughs> I know that brother has determined that two thousand dollars is in our account, and we have to pay rent. We have to do anything. So he said, Wait, uh, the brother said, well, No, I can't. <laughs> the other brother said the same amount, said fifty dollars or something like that. He said, No, don't do, don't disturb, don't don't drop that money. I know. But one thing I want us to know is this. That God will raise Molonia within three of us. And that's what's in this church. Amen. <laughs> okay. Thank God you cover everybody that is not here. <laughs> that God is going to, you know, welcome to the <laughs> favor of God. God is going to raise Melonia. And you know why I'm very sure of it and why I'm not afraid? Already now I'm a Melonia. <laughs> <laughs> and if you want me to, to account for it, I will account for it, and we know that I'm a millionaire. <laughs> I'm a millionaire by the grace of God. Not by just ordinary mouth. <laughs> Physically. <laughs> I'm serious. I'm a millionaire. <laughs> by the time I open myself, now you will see that I'm a millionaire. It's not my mouth. <laughs> I'm serious. So that you, be, you, you know that God is going to do it. That's why I started from where I started. So, then all the time we were praying, I don't know the, the reason why we are praying, but the brother always tell me that, uh, ah, you, you have been eating Ajesara, they call it Ajesara. <laughs> that uh, you have been eating a uh, uh, bodyguard. So that by the time you grow up, <laughs> your, your body will, and I see what God, I see what God has been, I mean, don't worry, whenever we are my place of work, I, I, all my people, when do you say so, I, you, you that are a fleet of cars in your front, in the front of your house. <laughs> I don't, uh, it's prayer. I want you to know that God is going to answer the prayer, except that uh, he's going to surprise you. He's going to surprise me. I'm just hearing the testimony so that you know that God will share, go with you. So this evening, there's a song we always sing down like right? Today, I will say it in the English. Janla lao fo ninja. Osho e mo rao gun. E mire e mo rao gun. Jesu to si waju o gun. Mi lo ton wa le ye. E nimba fo ju di joba a bo gun lo. So my wife can see the, the reason why I'm... I'm, 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 I'm I am what I am. I am, what I am. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So, by the power and the blood of Jesus, we will rise up, we will call upon the name of the Lord. And I sent, I don't know if I sent that, because I was so worried since morning, and I, I look at it, I say, one day is coming, that we will say, oh, there was a time they are trying to build the church. Charles, we just want to give $20,000. We want to do restitution for all what you have done. And then, for that, even pastor, we are just thinking. There's a lot of things you have done for us in the church. We want to compensate you. Take this amount of jar. Don't tell anybody. Just take it as your own jar. And, and I know that day, pastor, we call us a good boy. A good boy. Please, the Lord. We have done all those one when we, the church is not big like this. I remember there was a time they called us that where is the this eight hundred dollars? Where is it for? What is it for? Started telling them for this is for this. Then just we just send money. We just send money. So that I know God just remind us well, we need to pray again. The song I said that God uh, today is a, is a real battle. The wizard they should prepare for the war. Uh, the witchcraft they should prepare for the war because the Lord that back me is the one that is in front. And whosoever face me, whosoever. They are playing with the sword of God. That the song we have. so we call upon the name of the Lord. I want you to rise up and call upon the name of the Lord. I want you to, you know, I want you to pray for yourself first before you cover the whole church. <laughs> cover yourself first. You know, you know the reason why the Bible says the firstborn shall be the partaker of the blessing. That's what the Bible says. So you will call upon the name of the Lord for in this church. God raise millionaire. And let, let it start from me. 
call upon the name. I don't know how God is going to do it, but I know by the power in the blood of Jesus Christ is going to do it. Call upon the name of the Lord. Father, let go and write the date of today down. The, our testimony is being changed from tonight in the name of Jesus Christ. Because our testimony is being changed. Our destiny is being changed. Everything about us is being changed. I don't know how he's going to do it. I'm going to go up. But the day is coming. The only one person of us we write $20,000, 20000 check that, no, I give you to the headquarter church. That's apart from what we have done for the local church, Lord, we. let's call upon the name of the Lord. Father, raise me no near from this church and let it be that for me in Jesus' name. Let your name be glorified. In Jesus' name we, we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. I know God is good. God has done it in Jesus' name. When the when the test when is it going to be fulfilled? When I do not know. But very earnest, God will open way in the name of Jesus Christ. And we are going to be so it doesn't cost him a minute. He doesn't cost him a minute. The only thing he needs just to link us, open a way, do one business. And if we, we do all this, not the say as we do, it's a salary I will collect. A salary. But if God opens just a single way now, 
and I make ten thousand dollars the first time. Twenty thousand dollars. My friend there, he made it. Ten thousand dollars. Twenty thousand dollars. That's all. He made it. So let me, but I know God is going to go. Another thing I want us to pray for in this church that is becoming abnormal, and everyone of us, we are. It's very difficult to say the fact on the truth on the pulpit. And then immediately you say he grudges started. I started. A lot of things started. And you, you see that it is because of the truth you say that is causing all this, all this. We call upon the name of the Lord. We are a family in the Lord. There's nothing bitter in saying the affair is not truth. And if it is not truth, it's the matter of let us sit down. Uh, my brother, this is what you have said, I don't like it. This is what I've said, I don't like it. This is what I've said, I don't like it. And we let, I trust myself. I trust I trust myself. If it is me, the only thing is sorry. It never too big in my mouth. It never too big in my mouth. So we call upon the name of the Lord. The area the plant devil want to use that want to be causing a trade, that want to be causing um, grudges. Because when there's a grudge, there will not be answering of prayer. When there's a something, the word of God is true. The truth has to stand. The prayer is that God should open when, when the message is not going to someone, then it's not the word of God. But when that message is going to be prayer, is that God should open their eyes of people. Not only we hear, even those listening to it in the world. Open their eyes to see where God is talking to them in that world. Not to be converting it as if it's talking to them. Me. So, although I, I, I accepted that there's a way of presentation, you get what I'm saying? There's a way of presenting things that's smooth. And then there's something about me. If I see that that presentation is going to cause an error, it's going to cause problem. I stop my mouth until there's a time to say that something. So and I want us to be to be careful in that area too. As church is becoming large and the church is become, uh, becoming established, if we see that this truth will be difficult to tell this particular person at this period, let us share it. But if you come from the pulpit, if you see anything, there's a lot of things people come past that. Uh, why are you preaching about me? It is not you. It is just like there was a message. I don't know if I if I told you. I listened to you, Pastor. I was not there. Everything Pastor that has preached on that day was about me. You do anatomy, do anatomy for how many years? You didn't pass, and you are still doing nothing. Who's that? Let's say I was. Let's say I was in that in that way in the all in that day. I would say Pastor that was was preaching because he knows everything about me. But I was not there when he preached the message. That's what I'm saying. That, that's what I'm saying. Let's say I was in the church in that day he preached. To the extent that I wrote a message to him. With that message, with that message, I said, Pastor, what did I do for you? <laughs> but it, it's just crazy. I, I was not the one that was preaching. But everything he preached about that day was about me. So anytime something like that happened, let us come out. Oh, God, we will pray for everybody too, and God is going to help the church in this sort of But immediately that is grudges, immediately that is uh, there's no openness, it delays prayer. This is a pure advice. Doesn't need it doesn't need. We have listened to a lot of messages. We are, it doesn't need prayer. It's a practical. It's a practical, and God is going to help us in this sort of thing. But I want you to go and write it down. Ah, I'm going to be here. <laughs> Just like that, I'll 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 we thank you, Lord, because of the joy you bring to our midst, and we thank you, Lord, because of what you have done this day. We thank you, Lord, because you rewrite our destiny. We thank you, Lord, because you open way. And that joy, you have, you have sowed that seed in our life that we are now multimillionaire, and then we are going to be, you are going to open way for us to pursue it. 
and we are going to be surprised. You have done it in the past. There's nothing that's too difficult for you to do. And we will know that you can do it. To the extent that what we do not have, people believe that we have and we are living in the abundance of it. That's, a, that's our testimony. And we know by the power and the blood of Jesus Christ, this new chapter we are open. Devil will not close this in Jesus' name. You have said the dream is going to be achieved in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, because you are the Lord that answered prayer. In Jesus' name we pray. Praise the Lord. Our time is well spent. Isaiah chapter, Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word. Father, we decree that you might increase. Let your voice shine into our hearts in Jesus' name. Isaiah 60 verse 1. Isaiah 60 verse 1. It says, Arise, Shine, for the light is come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. For a reverse to, for behold, the darkness shall cover the earth and gross darkness the people, but the Lord shall arise upon thee, and his glory shall be seen upon thee. Amen. Now he said that he it's time said we should arise, and when we rise up. We should shine. They arise one, then shine. Amen. And as we are rising up as the children of God, we will keep on shining in Jesus' name. Why? Because the light is already in us. When we accept Christ as Christian, as believers, we receive the light of Christ. We see in John 1, you see that, that, he, that he is the light. He lightened us. When we accept Christ into our life, light comes and darkness di disappears. So when light comes, darkness comprehends it not. For the Father, we have light in us. We shouldn't sit, sit down. We might have the light and we'll still be sitting, sitting down, folding our hands. But here, as there is, is and telling us, arise. And when we arise, we need to take another step which is worth to shine because the light is come. It's not saying that, that the light is going to come or that the light will come. The light has come. It is now already. And if we are living in the light, we will keep shining in Jesus' name. See, salvation is not just an, an, it's not just an escape to heaven. Somebody just said that, oh, we are saved. It's just, oh, it's just an escape to, 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 it's not just an escape to, to heaven. It is a seal of distinction and a guarantee for a life of impact on the earth. God has distinct us, separated us, and have mandated us to make impact here on earth, to impact our, ge our generation. In Genesis, when he got created Adam, he gave him dominion. He said, take, dominate, reproduce, and dominate the earth. He said, I gave you everything. What I can think of on this earth. He said, take charge. Make impact. And I then affect your generation. That is the commandment. But Adam lost it all. But thank God, Jesus came. And Christ has come to reunite us to God 
and also to reestablish our dominion on earth. We have power, we have authority. And you see, wherever the suit of feet are stepped upon, we will possess it. Amen. And as believers, we should know that God paid a dear price to save us. He paid a costly price. He gave his only begotten son to ensure that we live an outstanding life here on earth. We are redeemed to reign and not to be enslaved in sin, not to be enslaved in failure, not to be enslaved in lack, not to be enslaved in, in, in our poverty, not to be enslaved in retardation, but to live an outstanding life an outstanding life, and as we live to our full potential as a as Christian, spiritually, physically, and, and uh, otherwise, we will make impact in Jesus' name. As Christians, it's also about us making the most use of our lives, all the all that Christ has given to us. We are supposed to stand out among our peers, to be unique in anywhere we go, in all that we do. We are a plus and not a minus. We are a contributor and not a, and not a, a consumer. We are a distributor and not beggars. Matthew chapter 5 verse 13 says that we are the lights of the world. Matthew 5 verse 13 says, Ye are the salt of the earth, but if the salt hath loved its savour, where we shall it be sorted? It is therefore good for nothing, but be cast out and be trodden under the foot of men. Fourteen says, Ye are the light of the world, a city that is set on an hill cannot be healed. Fourth, he said we are the salt of the air. Salt has function. It gives taste and it preserves. Now what? We are the, to give taste to life. There are so many lives that, that are tasteless. But when we appear, our position here, God pleases us here on earth to give taste to life. He pleases us here on, on earth to preserve life. So many are heading to destructions. And there are so many who are even in the kingdom of God in the light, they are shaken. Our duty is to preserve them. And as we lead to our full potential, God will be glorified in our lives in Jesus' name. He says we are the light. Light. I remember back then in, in, the, in, in the village at night when we were going to visit our neighbor. My grandmother, she would hold the, the lamp. She, she will be at the front while we will be walking behind. When she put her foot here, we put our foot. When there is mud with flood, we don't, we don't know, know, know the way. She, that, she is holding the light. The path that she took, we will also take that same path. Because why? Because she is the one holding the light. So you are the light of the world. The world is supposed to see through you. We are supposed to shine the light to show the world how to move, where to go, what they ought to know, what they ought to do. We are the pace setter. We are the one that paves the way to say, yes, this is the way. And when they see the light in us, they will all follow us in Jesus' name. In Isaiah, in Isaiah chapter 9, verse 8, Finally, before I close, that will be the last one we'll read, then we'll just pray. Isaiah chapter 9, verse 8. He says, The Lord sent a word into Jacob, and it had lightened upward. Israel. Now, Jacob is one person. Israel is a nation, but you can say a generation. When you look behind you, what do you see? 
there are generations behind you. That the word of God in you is not just to lighten you only, but to lighten your generation as well. That through you, nations, nations, nations will see the light. They will be lightened the word into Jacob and enlightened up Israel. He said that we are the light of the world. We cannot fail. And that is why it is a disgrace to the kingdom of God for believers to, to fail. For our God is a God that cannot fail. A lion begot lion. He is the lion of the tribe of Judah. So we rise to our feet and pray and say, Lord, I am the light of the world. I will shine. I will make impact here on them. I am the salt of the air. I will preserve nations. I will give taste to generations. Through me, generations will be lightened. The word of God in me. I am a success. There is a hero in you. Make full of your full potential. Make the most out of your life. The Lord, the ability to make everything out of my life. I will never live my less than what you've ordained me. To, to live. I will never live less than my potentials. All that you've embedded in me, I will make impacts. You are the light, you are the pace setter. You are the space setter. You set the pace for others to follow. When people, want, when people want to know the power of God, when they see you, they have seen the power. We are the light of the world. We will shine forth no darkness, no defeat, no limitation, no setback. You will lighten the world unto repentance, through our salvation, through our healing, through us, redemption, God will walk in us and through us. Thank you, Father. You are worthy. Thank you, Lord, Father. In the name of Lord, you are worthy. 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 In the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, I will walk in dominion. You said you gave me dominion. I shall possess my possession in the name of Jesus. Spiritually, I will attain my goal. Here on earth, I will attain my goal. Arise and shine. We have sit in that mountain for too long. It is time to arise. In Jesus' name we pray. Father, we thank you. We bless your holy name. Father, we thank you because oh God will live. We're going to live to our full potentials. Father, we are the light. Father, you've restored us. So you've restored our, our dominion. Father, we thank you. Be thou magnified, be thou glorified. Our light is shining. When others say that they cast down, we will say there is a lifting up. Darkness may cover the earth. Gross darkness covers the deep. But you said, Lord, you will shine your light upon us. But your glory shall be seen in us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's share the grace. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God.
in the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely God's goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives, and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Hallelujah.